Hi. You may know me as the guy who built the DIY heat recovery ventilator with a lot of healthy and efficient features. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you exactly how to build a smaller, simpler ventilation system that I designed myself. I've been absolutely loving how much it improves my indoor air quality, and now I'm ready to share it with you. This video will feature a POV, step-by-step -step build with overdub narration for ultimate clarity. So let's talk about what my ventilation system consists of. Well, it's basically a simple but powerful fresh air intake. It's best suited for tenants living in apartments with poor ventilation who are unable or unwilling to pay the rent for an apartment building with proper ventilation or honestly, unable to find one. It's also suited for those who otherwise can't or don't want to make significant modifications to their homes or those on a budget. So how does it work? Well, an energy efficient, speed adjustable fan blows outdoor air through a high efficiency filter and into your home. Just like my HRV, the housing is built exclusively from four millimeter Coroplast sheets and hot glue. Using the 3D design software SketchUp, I've created three different fresh air intake designs. Next, I'll show you my technical drawings, complete with all the measurements you'll need to build them yourself. Welcome to the Healthy Home Guide. This is a place where I share practical tips for creating a safe and healthy home, whether the word home refers to your house or your body. Please go ahead and like this video and subscribe because it helps me out quite a bit. Without further ado, here are my technical drawings. This first design uses the Lennox Healthy Climate X6672, which is a 16 by 25 by five inch MERV 16 filter with activated carbon coating to prevent both fine particles and gases from entering your home. It's the largest, most highly efficient of my designs. The filter lasts six months to a year. It uses AC Infinity's Cloudline Light A6, a super quiet six inch fan. It's powerful enough to ventilate larger spaces. The build footage you'll be seeing is for this system. This second design uses filter buys 14 by 14 by four MERV 13 filter and AC Infinity's Cloudline Light A4, a four inch fan. This design is smaller, easier to build and great for smaller rooms. The filter lasts three months. This third design uses that same filter by 14 by 14 by four MERV 13 filter, but with AC Infinity's Cloudline Light A6. So the six inch fan instead of the four inch. This design is also smaller, easier to build and good for medium to larger rooms. So why do my systems use thick, large filters with high MERV ratings? Well, the EPA recommends that we use filters with MERV ratings of 13 or higher, as these can remove small particles, which are the most harmful with much greater efficacy. Filters with high MERV ratings can, however, have more resistance to airflow, which can cause problems. That's why I used thick, large filters, which maximizes the surface area of the filter media, thereby increasing airflow and filter longevity. Now I'll tell you how to use my systems based on the outdoor climate. They absolutely have their limitations, keep that in mind. They cannot regulate the temperature or humidity of the incoming air and are thus not a high performance solution. If the outdoor temperature is too hot or cold or the humidity is too high, I run them on the lowest fan setting or even intermittently with an outlet timer so they're not introducing tons of air into the room, just enough to make it less stale. When the outdoor temperature or humidity isn't extreme, they do the job well. Think of them like a better version of opening a window. They're like opening a window, except the air they bring in is actually clean and its flow is controlled. Again, these systems are best suited for those with a limited budget or for those who can't significantly alter their living space for whatever reason. Maybe you're renting and your landlord doesn't feel like spending thousands of dollars on a proper ventilation system, of course. Maybe you live in the city and your outdoor air is particularly polluted. These systems are perfect for you. Before I show you the footage of my build, I wanna quickly speak to my method of measuring the parts. For my purposes, my method seems fairly efficient and accurate, but I'm not a builder, so I'm sure there's a better way to do it. If you find my method confusing, feel free to measure in your own way with the dimensions I've given you. Next point. In this build video, I overestimated the filter housing size by a quarter of an inch all around. Don't worry though, because the technical drawings I've given you have the corrected measurements. Anyway, here's the build video. 
I'll start by outlining one of the two longer sections of the duct. Right now I'm measuring the length of the bottom, and now I'm measuring the midpoint of that length, which I'll use as a guide to draw the shorter top of this section. From that midpoint, I'm measuring half the length of the top of the section to the right, and the other half to the left, which equals the total length of the top. And now up from that left endpoint, I'm measuring the width of the section, and the same for the right endpoint, and this completes the shape. This method helps ensure that the top and bottom of the section are parallel to each other and centered. And now I'm just connecting the dots to create the outline of the shape. Now drawing the top, done. And uh, now I'm making the exact same shape again, the second longer section of the duct. And I'm using the same measuring method. If this method is confusing to you, think of it as drawing the top line centered on the bottom line and then raising the top line up the width of the section where it belongs. And then outlining the shape and drawing the top line finally and done. Same shape as the last one. And now this is a new shape. So I'm making the first shorter section of the duct using the same method. So the length of the bottom, midpoint of the bottom, and from that midpoint, marking the endpoints of the top, raising those endpoints up the width of the section and connecting the dots. Have I explained this enough times? I, I hope this is clear. And draw on that side and the top. And next, we're gonna make that same shape again, which is the second shorter section of the duct. And that's the fourth and final piece of the duct. There we go. And now I'm cutting out the duct sections with a utility knife. So I gotta make sure that the knife doesn't lean too far to the left or right. Really keep it centered over that line. And when you do that first pass, which won't cut all the way through, don't press down too hard because it'll make it difficult to be accurate and stay over that line. You're also not going to cut Coroplast in one pass. You're going to need at least two passes. And almost done. And there we have it. Look at that. There's our first piece. So I'm just gonna fast forward through cutting the rest of the sections because if you've seen me cut one of them, you've seen me cut them all. But a little bit of advice here. So when you're cutting Coroplast, it's easier to cut parallel and perpendicular to the channels of the Coroplast. And it's more difficult to cut diagonally across them. Like right here, I'm cutting diagonal, that's harder. So be more careful with that. And that's our fourth and final section of the duct, all ready to be hot glued together. And I'm definitely wearing a mask, the 3M Aura, even though we're outside, because this is the healthy home guide, of course. And I'm also gonna be wearing goggles because I don't like hot glue fumes in my eyes. Okay, here we go. So I'm putting a single layer of hot glue on the edge of the shorter duct piece, and I'm sticking it to the longer duct piece. And this is important. So I'm resting that glued piece on the table, using the table as like a guide, waiting a minute for it to dry, and then applying a second layer of hot glue just to ensure the connection's secure, then waiting another minute for that to dry, and then rotating everything clockwise. And taking my other long duct piece and applying glue to the edge. And once again, resting that glued piece against the table as you press it in, using that table as a guide so that it attaches evenly. Waiting a minute, applying another layer of glue, and waiting another minute. Applying glue to the second short duct piece. And then rotating everything clockwise again, always clockwise. And once again, using the table as a guide to rest the piece against while you press it in. Waiting a minute, applying another layer of hot glue and waiting another minute, rotating clockwise again, and applying glue to that last piece, which will also be resting against the table as it gets pressed in, waiting a minute for it to dry, applying another layer of hot glue and waiting another minute for that to dry. And there you have it. That's your duct. 
So what you want to do now is take your hot glue gun and seal any places where you see that air might get through. Just making sure it's nice and tight. Now I'm measuring the first longer section of the filter housing, which is the same length as the longer section of the duct. And this is more straightforward. So you're basically just marking the length, marking the width and connecting the dots like I'm doing here. And now I'm making the exact same shape, the second longer section of the filter housing. And now I'm making a new shape, the first shorter section of the filter housing, which is the same length as the shorter section of the duct. Connecting the dots. And now I'm making that same shape, the second shorter section of the filter housing, and that's all four sections. This is the Cora Claw. You use it to make cuts that run parallel to the channel. So you put the innermost prong in the hole and drag down. And then I'm using my utility knife to cut perpendicular to the channels. And there you go. That's one piece of the filter housing. Second piece, I'm once again using the Cora Claw. A uh, quick note about the Cora Claw. So you use the inner prong to cut through both layers of the Coroplast, so to cut it completely. And you use the outer prong to cut through only one layer of the Coroplast. Once again, using the core claw to cut parallel to the channels and the utility knife to cut perpendicular. And now we're gluing the filter housing together. So applying hot glue to the short piece or one of the short pieces. And once again, resting it on the table and then pressing it into the longer piece. Waiting a minute, applying another layer of hot glue and waiting another minute, rotating clockwise again, always clockwise applying hot glue to the longer piece and resting it on the table and pressing everything together. Waiting a minute, applying another layer of hot glue, waiting another minute, rotating clockwise again and applying hot glue to that last short piece, resting it on the table as you press it in. Are you guys seeing the pattern here? Hopefully it's pretty clear at this point, right? Rotating clockwise. Applying hot glue to that last longer piece. Resting it on the table as you press it in. Waiting a minute. Applying another layer and waiting another minute. And there you go. That's your filter housing. So what I'm doing here is I'm filling the area of the filter housing that will be contacting the duct with hot glue just to even it out and make it a smooth level surface that can be glued to the duct properly. So then I wait for all that glue to dry and then put the duct right on top of the filter housing. Make sure it's all even all around. Lift the duct a little bit and in the gaps, put in that hot glue. Get it all the way down and then press the duct down into the filter housing and hold it for a minute. Then do another side. And press that duct right down into the filter housing once again, making sure that connection is even all around and do all four sides. So this is important. So lift everything up and pipe hot glue anywhere where you see gaps in between the core plast sections just to keep everything airtight. So now I'm gonna be making the square at the top of this window ventilator where the fan attaches. And it's pretty straightforward. You're just measuring the square, connecting the dots, and cutting it out. So now I'm situating my fan so that the airflow direction is pointing down at that square. And then I'm just tracing around the fan in a circle. And now I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut out that circle. And the reason why I'm using an X-Acto knife instead of the utility knife is because X-Acto knives are more precise for cutting circles. And so I pop that out. And there you have it. That's where the fan's going to be blowing into. So what I'm doing here is I'm piping hot glue into the Coroplast channels because when the glue dries, it'll stabilize this area of the shape 
I just want to make it as rigid as possible. So I forgot to film this part, but I put hot glue on the perimeters of that square and then put it right down on the window ventilator. And now I'm putting extra hot glue just to make sure the connection is extra secure. And waiting a minute. And now I flipped over the window ventilator and I'm putting hot glue on the inside of where that square contacts the ventilator. And then I'm going and I'm looking for any possible gaps and sealing them with hot glue. And finally, I clean the window ventilator. And I'm using vinegar for this because this is the healthy home guide once again. And vinegar is less toxic as a cleaning product. And you guys know how to use a paper towel, so wiping the outside, wiping the inside. And there it is. There's the window ventilator of my dreams, of your dreams. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my God, like this video, come on. So as I said in the intro, I overestimated the size that the ventilator in this video should be by a quarter of an inch, which is why I used two layers of weather stripping foam on the outside of the filter housing. Again, you shouldn't have to do that if you just follow the dimensions in my technical drawings. Those are correct. You might still want to use one layer of weather stripping foam for a tight seal between the filter and the housing. Anyway, position your filter with the airflow arrows pointing up and just try to get it down into that housing. Should be a nice, tight fit. If you want even better sealing, you can use weather stripping tape actually on the perimeter. And wait, watch how satisfying this is. Ha ha ha. Oh, look at it. Oh it's, oh, it's even better. If you haven't liked this video at this point, what are you doing? So next, I'm gonna be making one of the support legs for the window ventilator. So this rightmost section is the same width as the filter housing, and that's where it's gonna be glued to. And to determine the length of this second section, which is the leg itself, you're just gonna measure from the floor to your windowsill. And I'm gonna cut at this leftmost line to make the foot, you'll see. So now at the rightmost line, I'm cutting only one layer of coroplast, only once, because look, it allows me to bend it like this and have it still stay attached. That flap will be glued to the ventilator. Now I'm cutting at the end of the leg. Don't be confused by where the lines are. I just had to flip over the uh, whole thing so that the leg hinge is on a different side from the top hinge. See how the top hinge is on the left and the leg hinge is on the right? And now I need to fully cut through, so two passes through that leftmost line to shorten the foot. So if you're confused at this point, don't worry. Seeing it in action will clear things up for you. So now I'm gonna glue that top hinge to the filter housing. And I didn't think it was necessary to show me making this, but I made a second leg facing the opposite direction for additional support. And there it is, in all its glory. There's that second leg I was talking about on the right. I'm not an engineer, so there may be a better way to support this, but this way has worked for me. So this next thing is important. You're gonna have to create a coroplast window insert, which creates a seal for the fan to pull through. It's gonna be the width of your window. Using the same strategy I used to make the other fan hole, I made this fan hole in the insert. The airflow direction blows into the window ventilator itself, obviously, right? Drawing air in from outside. Okay, this is important. So we intake air through that fan, which creates positive pressure in the house if we don't also crack open a window. So crack open a window across the room to exhaust air out and maintain neutral pressure. And here's a smaller version with a 14 by 14 inch filter. The window is actually sealed with a clear acrylic insert with a four inch exhaust hole on the right. You can't really see the insert, but it's there. And this is a smaller fan at four inches. It's good for a small room, but not a large one. So I've equipped this window ventilator with an outlet timer. So you can determine the amounts of time it repetitively cycles on and off for if you want. So this is good for if it's like really hot or really cold. You can just have it go on periodically to not change the temperature of the room that much, but still bring in some fresh air. Oh yeah, that also applies to if it's really humid outside as well. You might be wondering if I've recorded performance data for this system, and of course I did. First, I measured airflow and CFM at various fan speeds. It generates 55 CFM on speed 1 of 10, so the lowest speed, 
175 CFM on speed 4 of 10, and 360 CFM on speed 10 of 10. Here is some health data. It reduced PM 2.5 and 10 in the room it's in by 92 to 98%. It also keeps CO2 levels at an average of around 600 parts per million, down from an average of 900 parts per million, and VOCs to a minimum. Like this video if you like those results. I want to quickly explain the reasoning behind my design decisions. I chose to put the filter after the fan and have air blowing out of the filter instead of out of the fan because the filter outlet has a larger area than the fan outlet. So the same volume of air blows out of the filter at a lower velocity than it blows out of the fan. But why does this matter? Well, lower air velocity is better for comfort because people don't like air blowing on them. Another reason I put the filter after the fan is because if the filter was before the fan, the filter would have to be in the window and I'd be afraid it would get wet if it rained. I hope I earned your subscription today. If you have any questions about this system or the build, do comment below. I'm here to help you guys. Could you let me know what you like about this design and what you don't like about this design? Anyway, thanks for watching.